Hi everyone and hello to all the pageant fans all over the world and the universe rather and to my new subscribers and returning viewers welcome back to my YouTube channel before I start with today's episode allow me to say thank you so much to everyone who greeted me a happy happy birthday I really appreciate each of you and again from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you thank you so so much I also want to highlight a good friend of mine his name is Cairo Pinto he gave me this beautiful palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills and this is the palette that I used for today's episode. There you have it. So if you're watching this episode right now and you're not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Help me to grow this channel and to reach a milestone here in YouTube simply by clicking the subscribe button below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Today's episode here in my channel is all about the Asian delegates in Miss Universe 2020. So basically, we are going to talk about anything and everything about this Asian countries, their past Miss Universe performances or participation. Plus, I'll also be adding some insight about their current representative who will compete in Miss Universe 2020. To start with today's episode, let's start with Sawaliha Suwaima, Thailand. It was in 2015 when Thailand was able to put back their sash in the Miss Universe beauty pageant. And for the past five years, Thailand proved this all that they deserve to be in the Miss Universe stage. But what is really lacking why Thailand is having such a hard time winning a Miss Universe crown? This is just based on my own opinion or observation aside from the fact that maybe the universe is not aligned yet for this country to win its third Miss Universe. I have to say that Thailand is actually sending delegates that are not 100% Miss Universe ready. What do I mean by that? Definitely when it comes to styling, overall performances, evening gowns, swims and competition, their delegates are actually really good when it comes to those aspects of the competition. But for me, what really lacking is the preparedness of their delegates when it comes to q and We witnessed how Chalita, Maria, and even Fasai answered those nerve-wracking questions. And all of them gave a so-so answer to that particular question. And the result, a runner-up placement, not a Miss Universe crown. Now with Amanda Obdam, another representative from Thailand who will surely make a mark in this year's competition, I know for a fact that she can carry herself, that she can deliver so well, whether it's close to her interview and even in the preliminary competition. And I know for a fact that she will really study so well or practice, you know, so hard so that she can actually deliver her opening statement full of confidence like what she did in Miss Universe uh, Thailand 2020. I never doubt that this girl can actually be part of the top 10 semi-finalist. Next is Aku Sinta Kamu, Indonesia. Just like Philippines and Thailand, they have a very supportive pageant fans in the universe. And for the past few years that I've watched Miss Universe, I have to say that my favorite delegate from Indonesia is Frederica Kau. And for me, Frederica Kull is the best representative of Indonesia set in Miss Universe. And with Indonesia's representative this year, Ayu Maulida. Hello Universe! This is Ayu Maulida, Miss Universe Indonesia 2020. This year has been very tough and challenging. Many of us experience difficulties and hardships, and we even try to keep ourselves calm while staying at home. This year taught me to enjoy the simple things yet very important in my life, and that is my family. Despite the hard times, I learned so much to take a good care of myself while turning challenges into new opportunities. My resolution for the new year is to become more familiar with the rise of the social issues due to the pandemic and continue to share more to those who need it as well as get together with my universe sisters and make Indonesia proud. 
I can't wait to see you all. Bye. I have to say that this girl has something to offer. And I'm also sure that Ayu Malida will make her country proud in this year's edition of Miss Universe 2020. Another thing that I would like to highlight about this country, Indonesia, and their participation in Miss Universe beauty pageant is their national costume. They are very keen into details. They pay so much attention in details when it comes to their national costume. And I guess it's something that I, you know, I really appreciate, even though it's not really part of the scoring for you to be part of the semi-finalist. But it's always good to see, you know, um, how you represent your national costume in an international stage. So good job for Thailand and for Indonesia for always, you know, being consistent when it comes to their national costumes. Now, what is the reason why Indonesia is having such a hard time winning a Miss Universe crown? And just like Thailand. This is just my own opinion. Aside from the fact that the universe is not aligned yet for Indonesia, for them to win a Miss Universe crown, I have to say that they don't have that sash factor unlike the Philippines. They never had the opportunity to show to the world, the universe rather, how good they are when it comes to Q&A. And that is the saddest part about Indonesia's performance or participation in Miss Universe Beauty pageant. But checking the current representative of Indonesia in Miss Universe Beauty pageant, I have to say that just like Thailand, they are also prepared. But then again, kahit gaano pa ka prepared ang isang candidate, if wala siyang X factor, if she cannot really stand out amongst you know every candidate in the competition, the preparedness will just be wasted. In my own opinion, I guess that Indonesia can possibly part of the top semi-finalist, top 20 or top 16 semi-finalist. Next is Sin Chao, Vietnam, a fighting country. Thanks to Henny for representing Vietnam so well in Miss Universe 2018. Because of her, Vietnam became one of the countries in Asia to watch out in Miss Universe beauty pageant. Last year's representative of Vietnam was really a bomb. She has the beauty, she has the body. She's almost perfect. But, and with the current representative of Vietnam in Miss Universe 2020, I have to say that she's a little bit of a downgrade for me compared to the last two delegates who competed in 2018 and in 2019. Next is Namaste India. Their delegates has really something to offer in Miss Universe beauty pageant. However, they're missing their sash factor in the competition. India can really make us all wow when it comes to Q&A. But then again, based on my own observation, this is just my own opinion, what is really lacking or missing with their representative is having that X factor. Or I have to say that they are not really sending a high calibrated girls who will compete in Miss Universe beauty pageant. I always believe that it's not just about you being beautiful, but it's about having that charisma, having that X factor is also an important thing in Miss Universe. And I have to say that Adeline, the current representative of India in Miss Universe beauty pageant, is somehow an upgrade compared to their last year's representative. Look at these photos, a fresh, young looking, and a new face in the pageantry. She has the face, the beauty, the body, but I really appreciate more if, you know, her look is more glam compared to, you know, this uh, simple look because hindi masyadong na-highlight yung beauty ni Miss India in this photos. Will India have a chance to be part of the top 10 semi-finalists? Definitely, chances are always there to be part of the top 10 semi-finalists. The crucial part of the competition is always the opening statement because you are being judged right away. You are being judged with your speaking abilities, how you communicate with people, how you connect yourself, and you as a whole. And I have to say that the current representative of India or Adeline needs to focus more on how she can do her strategy during the opening statement because like what happened uh, with their previous representative um, her opening statement was not that strong in smaller towns of india bigger dreams were not meant for a girl but i was a dreamer and a believer and i never gave up today through my non-profit organization 
we provide health care to those who are in need. And along the side, I landed up on a cover of Vogue. So I want to tell all the girls to have a dream. Believe in yourself, embrace it, and create your own story. Now Adeline needs to make sure that she will leave a mark. You know, if ever she will be able to make it to the top uh, 20 or top 16 semi-finalist in Miss Universe Beauty Pageant. Next is Mabuhay, the Philippines, a real pageant powerhouse in Asia. I have to say that it's indeed that the Philippines already established its strong stash factor in Miss Universe Beauty Pageant. And after all, this country is a Miss Universe ready. Now let's talk about Rabia Mateo. I have to be honest that for me, she's not an upgrade from last year's representative, Gazzini Ganados. But when it comes to q and I have to say that Rabia Mateo is surely an upgrade compared to the last year's representative of Philippines in Miss Universe Beauty Pageant. So far right now, I have to say that I see her landing in the top 10 semifinalists. Granted that she will give a solid performance during the opening statement. Because I know for a fact that she can actually manage to pass or to uh, impress the judges with the uh, closer interview. And I can say that we have a lot when it comes to preliminary competition for swimsuit and evening gown. But the real challenge of the competition is really the opening statement. I hope that she will be able to deliver her opening statement so well. She's composed. And I hope that you know um, she will also make a mark you know, during the opening statement. And I'm really excited to see what Miss Universe Philippines is cooking behind the cameras. I'm sure that hindi magpapatalo ang Philippines when it comes to the Miss Universe competition. So let's wait and see. So for other Asian countries that were not part of this episode, I just want to be honest that for me, these are the countries na walang bila. They don't have that sash factor and it may take them a while, you know, for them to be able to be seen or to be noticed in the Miss Universe stage. Reasons behind it, I'll be sharing you some reasons um, that is, you know, based on my own opinion, observation. Their country is not as crazy as Philippines, Thailand, or even Indonesia when it comes to beauty pageants, just like Miss Universe. Second is that Miss Universe beauty pageant has no relevance at all to the country where they belong. So who is the strongest country or countries in Asia? in Miss Universe 2020, I have to choose the Philippines and Thailand. These two countries already made a huge impact to every pageant fans all over the universe. So when it comes to Miss Universe, it's like watching a battlefield. That the fight or the battle will not be complete without the Philippines and Thailand and the top 10 semifinalists or even in the top 5 semifinalists. I'm choosing Philippines and Thailand because they already established their credibility when it comes to sending their delegates. Plus, of course, they're very consistent when it comes to their sash factor every year. So that'll be all for today's episode here in my channel. I want to say thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope that somehow this video uh, can make you feel happy. And uh, yeah, somehow excited then sa darating na Miss Universe uh, beauty pageant na sana mangyari um, next year, second quarter of 2021. And again, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you to everyone who greeted me a happy, happy birthday. And yeah, happy new year everyone. Happy, happy new year to everyone um, who's watching this episode. And to everyone na hindi ko na masyadong nare-replyan. Uh, I'm really, really sorry. I will really try my very best to reply to the comments nyo in every episode. It's just so happened that um, so am busy with my personal life and also with my career. Sana in personal life, no? Sana ano siya? Sana maging smooth. Sana maging um, you know happy lang. And I guess um, as the year 2020 ends, I just wish everyone good health, um, successful career. And let's welcome 2021 with a big heart for everyone. And always remember to stay kind because you can never go wrong with kindness. Guys, I want to say thank you so much again. This is a genuine smile. I'm really happy. I just miss everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your love and for your support. I love you all from the bottom of my heart.